Eric Darling here once again with Darling Data. And uh, in this video, <clears throat> we're going to talk about why implicit transactions are terrible, horrible, no good, very bad things. Now, part of why they are no good, horrible, very bad things is because <clears throat> they are the default auto commit option for the Microsoft JDBC driver and uh, the Python driver for SQL Server. Uh, whenever I talk to a client who is using either one of those, I know that I'm in for a long day of explaining the auto commit uh, feature, the auto commit, uh, 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 I don't know, connection string element, whatever you call it. I'm not a programmer, I don't know the names of these things. Flag. I don't know. I don't care that much. Uh, call it whatever you want. But uh, part of why that is a poorly chosen default is because of Microsoft's poorly chosen default of read committed, the garbage isolation level, as the default isolation level for SQL Server databases, except Azure SQL DB, which is the one good thing I'll say about Azure SQL DB. The rest of it is a waste of time and money. Uh, Yeah, so uh, because Microsoft made a, a big, big oopsie daisy uh, back in like 2005, uh, we have lived with um, the consequences and the consequences of billions and billions of no lock hints ever since. So, happy birthday, no lock. So, what I'm going to do is in this window, I am going to step through this script one thing at a time. And then we're going to go look at a different window. I'm going to set implicit transactions on. We are going to run this update. And then we are going to run this select. And all that's going to go fine. And then in this window, we are going to set implicit transactions on. We are going to run this select. And we are going to wait for all eternity. Now, uh, more recent versions of SP Who is active, and I didn't actually mean to close that, have added uh, details about implicit transactions to the output if you use the at get transaction info parameter and set that to 1. There we go. So you set that to 1, and you will get a column a little bit further over in the results. called implicit tran and we will see that implicit transactions are open for both of these queries and if we come back a little bit we will have what appears to be a select query against the users table I'm going to try to get my head right between these two we have a select query against the users table block what looks like blocking a select query against the post table but that's because we made a connection we ran one query and then we ran another query and um, SQL Server and because of the implicit transaction SQL Server ain't telling us the whole story now the real crappy thing is I mean the the deadlock XML and the block process report can already be misleading enough on their own like capturing whatever query is in the buffer at the time that a deadlock or the blocking uh, blocking block process monitor loop uh, goes through and finds some blocking but this makes it worse because uh, whatever query in the batch uh, that was part of the implicit transaction was open will uh, show up in the block process report deadlock XML. And if you're using a tool that, uh, you know, like SP who is active that shows you what's currently running, this will look very, very strange to you. So implicit transactions uh, cause a lot of additional blocking problems. Um, uh, at least, you know, from everything that I've ever seen uh, with people using them. Um, and they also make, well, actually blocking and deadlocking problems. Uh, part of that is because Microsoft made a bad choice with the default isolation level for SQL Server. And part of that is because implicit transactions are just a terrible idea. So, if you are using the Microsoft JDBC driver, if you are using the Python driver to connect to SQL Server, 
I would strongly advise you to use read committed snapshot isolation as your isolation level uh, because you will avoid a lot of the really crappy blocking, deadlocking, and very confusing uh, uh, reports for analyzing locking and blocking. So uh, if I had to rate things, I would say use an optimistic isolation level, flat out, period, do it. Uh, don't use implicit transactions, flat out, period, don't do it. Uh, if you're going to use implicit transactions because you're too lazy to change your code, uh, then you absolutely need to use an optimistic isolation level with SQL Server. Otherwise, uh, you will be creamed by the locking and blocking that goes on. Or you can do what everyone else does, slather your code in no lock hints and just hope, for the, hope and pray for the best. Hope and pray that you return correct data to your clients and nothing is ever wrong and you never catch a weird update in the middle of anything because Lord knows that never happens. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. I hope that you will choose to like and subscribe to this channel full of SQL Server wit and wisdom. And uh, again, uh, I don't know. I'll see you in the next video. And again, thank you for watching.